Hi, a few weeks ago I came to introduce you to Scott Knight and a lot of you commented that you'd like me to do that again and take a bit more time. So today I'm back with Scott and uh, I'll give him a bit more chance to do the talking. Here we are. Hello Scott, how are you doing? Morning all, how are you doing? Would you like to take a little bit more time and show us around your shop? Certainly, have a look. The trouble is with anybody when they walk in here Scott, is uh, there's so much to look at mate, <laughs> you really don't know what yeah, would be a good is. place to get started. So, yeah. um, There's a bit of everything, um, some old, some new, a lot of traditional stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it is stone based. Quite What's your favourite material to work on, Scott? You got one? Um, at the moment, it's your Langdale Tough, the green stone. I'm really enjoying playing with that. I'm getting some nice shapes, it's a nice feel, good hard stone, very rewarding, not very forgiving. You deal with it quite differently to me, don't you? Yeah, I'm using um, a lot of modern lapidary, or lapidary tools, um, similar stuff I'd use for my jade work. Um, started off making jade. Well, that's incredible. You're no stranger to stones, are you, mate? No, I do love stones. It's a genuine love. These are some of the jades I've worked in the past. Oh, well. Mm. Let's uh, see if we can get a bit closer in there, mate. Traditional Maori designs, um, which I started off working with, but in time I've learned to look at my own heritage and find designs from my own bloodline as it were and uh, indeed, these stones indeed. from our own So country. the greenstone works quite well for you? Greenstone is a beautiful example. Flint again is wonderful, really magic material. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of time and a lot of effort but you can get some cracking results. There's a lot of people know you for the carving on your skulls. Yeah. And your most recent exercise is working on a piece of um, uh, what's that stone called? Sarsen stone. A piece of sarsen from Wiltshire. Which is hard as stone. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you imagine that stuff sitting on the top of Stonehenge? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's um, where it needs to go, really. <laughs> he will go back there and there'll be some pictures taken. He's, he's from Avebury Village, um, the largest Neolithic monument in the world, probably. Um, How much time have you put into him so far? So far, you're looking at 10, 12 hours, I reckon. Right. Um, but it probably was originally once one of the standing stones they were destroyed in medieval times because they believed that they were the devil's work yeah they, you don't really calculate your hours when you're working though do you not important to me no, yeah. no it's not, that's fantastic not about the time well we're going to have a great time in here so we'll uh, we'll uh, browse around a little further I'll see if I can um, just take a little wander to ju just try and find something that naturally my eyes don't really know what to s you know. So one of the wonderful things for Scott is he spent many, many hours um, working on farms and bits and pieces. And uh, even though he's in big machinery, he quite often puts himself on his feet and <laughs> roams around along, uh, across the land and. Um, Finds bits and pieces, so you've yeah. got quite a few uh, good old artefacts yeah. as well, haven't you, Scott? Um, for example, here we got a, that's a sabre cavalry sword, elephant ivory, probably from India. Well, wow. that's the handle from the sword. All the metal bits are gone, but the ivory survived. And did you carve that, or is that? Um, no, is that's, that's a genuine field find. And that's what you found. Yeah. Wow. Well. That's Indian ivory. It's probably 1600, 17th century, but that would have been your cavalry sabre at some point. Huh. Um, we got clay pipes. Yeah. And flint tools, scrapers, disc knives, etc. <laughs> Find any number of those. Um, bones. We got pieces of mammoth bone that came off the North Norfolk coast. It's just having an eye and time to stop and look, really. 
It really is a uh, yeah, it really is an incredible collection. What I like is the way you've actually taken things and they've all got a kind of home. <laughs> There's no limits to it. Is there? Well, some of it's been here since the day I moved in. Right. Things I put on the shelf and I've never moved, which appeals to me really. But that's some of it that gets taken down and used and put back, and some of it is just part and parcel furniture in a place, so <laughs> nothing ever changes for it. But I know where everything is. If I need it, I can go and get it. But <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. There's no real, you know, catalogue deal. Okay, so this is a typical whistle stop tour along one of Scott's shelves. So the first thing I noticed was um, this big old crocodile when <laughs> I've never seen him before. He's uh, looking like he's been there a while, actually, Scott, but uh, you <laughs> tell me you've only just moved him back in. Yeah. I don't know whether to zoom out or zoom in, really, Scott. <laughs> Hours of project carving right in front of you there, hey mate? Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. So this is one of the things, Scott. There's me thinking about making a mace head, and you get, seem to get in a habit of every time I think about doing something. <laughs> You get stuck straight in there and do it. <laughs> well, I hope I'm doing you some kind of justice here for the people of. Uh... So, what are you doing with the human hand in your workshop, Ben Scott? Um. <laughs> That's a cunning reproduction made of deer foot bones. You made a cunning reproduction out of deer foot bones? Yeah, that came from Elverdon. It was a red deer that was hit on the road. Right, on. Kept an eye on him for a couple of months, and when he was clean, I picked up all the little bits, wired them together, and made a <laughs> lamp stand out of an old. Uh, it's got a little, uh, little light in it, if you get that there. There you go. <laughs> So you obviously don't work in the house then, Scott? No, um, by the nature of my work it is dusty. Pretty dusty. Business. And uh, you, you pretty much do all your carving in here, do you? Yeah. Sort of little outhouse. The bigger projects move outside for the initial grind because you can't be using okay. angle grinders. And, uh, and this is where this is where you give birth to a lot of these beautiful relics that you work in. Yeah, I can get close up. So Scott's now donning all his headgear. You look like you're going mining, Scott. A lot of the time, I feel like I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mate. <laughs> it just gives me that. So it's about 50 times magnification, is it? Yeah, well, I've got various sets of lenses, which I haven't put back in the box, which is very naughty, but yeah. You know, we can change lenses, get a bit closer, a bit further away. Yeah. Um, depending on what size I'm working on, I mean, something like that, you're not going to need magnification, but yeah. when I'm working down to Sort of scale. Hang on a second, let me just zoom in on that, Scott. We've got a good zoom on this, mate. So, what have you got there, Scott, that I'm even having trouble focusing on? Um, it's a tiny shard of prehistoric mammoth ivory. Came from the ice in Siberia. Uh, he's going to be a tiny little skull bead when he's finished, if he's finished. <laughs> So Scott, I promised everyone um, that I'd uh, focus on your uh, necklace, yep. and then I forgot to come back to it, mate. <laughs> Have a quick look round this. Yeah. Every single piece of this is intricately carved, and it all seems like it's made out of um, a, an entirely different uh, raw material as well. There are a lot of different materials here from all over the world. Most of my gifts from friends, um, I've traded pieces, been given pieces, but each bit marks a different time in life really. It's been in the works about 20 years, every time something changes, there was a shift in the pattern of life, I'll add another bead, another chapter to the story. Yeah, it's quite interesting that uh, there was a couple of people that seemed interested in buying it last time, but it's not really not really possible, is it? No, that would be like <laughs> selling my eyeballs or my earlobes, I mean, it's not, Yeah, it's, yeah. it's part of me and... Uh, and um, <laughs> what I really like about it as well is you've got 
is you've got a transition of your own skill set as well so you've got things where you've actually started in the early days and uh, right through to when you've you know c cemented your skill set and yeah. got to a place where you're particularly happy with this little fella illustrates it nicely this is one of the first skulls I ever carved from a piece of lignium wood and four years later I carved that one at the same piece of wood, just the other end of it. Wow. And it shows the transition of how... Substantially more detailed, yeah. I mean, now I'd look at that and think, well, that's not finished. We could do more than that. No, it's a four-year gap, and there's definite progress. And I like the fact that there is that difference. And I like that in another four years, I can look at the stuff I've made today and think, I'll move forward that little bit more, or see somewhere I can move into. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This one has a lot of... Uh, good energy that was the first piece of well yes first hard stone I ever carved first piece of jade which particular so, piece of that is the, that's the a little crocodile huh. well wow. that was a sort of a test piece I used a little shard of jade that came from Florida yeah um, so yeah that's my introduction into stonework really I'm sure anyone that's viewing this is probably begging me to turn the camera left turn the camera right <laughs> and Guys, it's just like, where do you want to put your camera? Even up there, look, I've got a pair of antlers coming down. Is that a plate that you've sort of like attached it to and represented a skull? Or is that actually a skull? Where are we looking? <laughs> We're looking at the plate. Oh, up yeah, there. No, that's, um, that's, yeah, I copied the rim off the willow pattern plates we have in the kitchen. <laughs> and put that onto the skull itself, did you? Yeah, just painted it on. Wow. This is a piece of Russian cloth I copied the design of and painted onto a road here that was killed on the road. That is so creative. So, one question which is quite obvious, important to ask, is your little shop open for um, anyone, any of uh, the general public yeah, to I pop in and come and meet here and talk about projects clean, and carvings? Yeah. If somebody wants um, something particular made or a piece of jewellery, um, bracelets and stuff off to need measurements taken and I say well come and have a cup of coffee we'll have it measure up yeah rattle through find the materials we want to use and um, you know sketch something up with you and it's a nice way to start the project I like to work with people who I I know it's nice on the internet when you can chat to somebody on a messenger or something but if somebody comes face to face you know that little bit about them and you can use that to focus into the art and it, it's just yeah. It makes the communication stronger because you've met them and yeah. you care yeah. about them and they've seen what you're doing and it just it's, a, it's somewhere to No, I understand that. Build on. No, it's really nice. Okay, thanks, Scott. Cheers. <laughs>